Great white sharks have been described as many things, but are seldom thought of as vulnerable. With a diminishing population of fewer than 5,000 great white sharks in our oceans, can we consider them any other way? Having captivated the minds of many, they remain mysterious and misunderstood. Marine biologists from the Dyer Island Conservation Trust are seeking to unravel some of these mysteries by conducting groundbreaking research amongst the densest population of white sharks in the world. In summertime, white sharks along the Western Cape all move inshore. They keep continuing up and down the coastline, but they all move inshore, or the vast majority of them seem to. Now, there's a lot of theories out there as to why they do this, some being, you know, resting, some being feeding, some being potential pupping. What we want to look at is, in terms of environmental parameters, what is it that brings them down there and are they having a significant effect? So the main thing about this research is to find out the inshore habitat use of white sharks. What, why, when, how? Ellison's work involves various aspects such as tagging, tracking, dorsal fin identicates, as well as testing water temperatures and oxygen levels. We're going to test a little bit about the, the water parameters in the area. So we're going to sample inshore and around the island just to get a little bit of a better idea of what conditions are out there. And, uh, the really nice thing is the piece of equipment that we're using samples the whole water column. So we're not just looking at this, the, the surface um, parameters, we're looking at the whole, the whole water column perspective. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to deploy it down to the bottom and then as soon as it's profiled the whole, depth, uh, the whole water column, then we're going to start to bring it back up again. Okay, can everybody see the weights, yeah? Let's see what it feels like when it really touches the bottom, so we just know. So you feel that it's pulling, right? Wait. Ready, Kira? One, two. The relevance to the research is actually what, what we're establishing is why sharks are moving into certain areas of the bay at certain times and if it is um, affected by environmental parameters such as sea, sea temperature, um, salinity, oxygen, chlorophyll, etc. Um, white sharks can have a, a lot of their behaviour affected by things like water temperature, so we, we're going to establish that hopefully through tracking them. The research team will also focus on shark predation, wound healing, parasites and predator-prey interactions, seeking answers to the many unknowns. Michelle and Oliver are crucial scientists to the team. Um, Michelle's main focus is going to be interactions between um, white sharks and different cetaceans um, within the bay. She's already documented some fascinating stuff there. Um, and then Oliver is going to be looking more at island hunting strategies. Um, he wants to have a look at how you know the, the sharks hunt here differently to Mossel Bay, um, whether it's size specific, whether the activity spaces of the sharks are different here to there. Um, so between the two of them, they're really focal um, key, key aspects to our team. But the trust work is not confined to great white sharks. In partnership with the marine authorities, a Cape Fur Seal tagging study, which looks at cow and pup relations, was conducted. The endangered African penguin is another creature being studied, and with the introduction of artificial nest boxes, they are now being actively conserved. <laughs> 